I've been covering GhostBSD on this channel for a few years now. And unlike some reviewers out there, I actually use GhostBSD every day alongside FreeBSD. And so does my family. So I hope I can give this the review it deserves without being slightly biased. It's always great to see a new build. I say a new build because GhostBSD doesn't have releases. It's a rolling release OS and the number of the release is the date the new OS build was put onto a ISO image. We'll have a look at the live session desktop first before getting into the installation. If you have watched any of my previous videos about GhostBSD, you'll be familiar with how the desktop looks and behaves. And the live session desktop in this release is no different. The wallpaper decor is the same, and for the last year or so, the icon theme has also unchanged. I quite like how it looks. It has a workstation feel about it rather than a gimmicky appearance. And for some reason, talking about icons, for some reason the install USB has been auto-mounted to the desktop. Something that doesn't normally happen, so if you wondered what the... DA0 CD icon was, it's just the install media. The desktop comes with four virtual desktops as usual, and the menu items are arranged into three groups, applications, places, and system. In the applications menu, you have accessories, graphics, internet, office, programming, sound and video, and system tools. The places menu features local and remote computer access, and the system menu allows administration tasks as well as logging out etc. Because GhostBSD is an all-in-one OS, ready to go out the box as they say, what you get with the system is quite important if for a user that, and this could be a thing, may not have internet access. So you had better make sure they have what they need from the start. There are a few good install choices, but there is one omission which I feel is dropping the ball somewhat, and that is the exclusion of an Office suite, such as LibreOffice, or at the very least, a word processor and a spreadsheet. I understand that they excluded LibreOffice so that the live session would fit inside 4GB of memory, but at the very least, Abbey Word could be included, which is a very small and lightweight word processor, and perhaps you could leave out evolution and transmission. But I'm just a reviewer, and at the end of the day, the developer does know his target audience better. And Eric, the lead developer, is a great guy who puts so much love and effort into the OS as a side project to his very busy life that I can't complain. I can just drop in. Looking at the system resources, you can see that it's currently using 2.9 gigabytes because as a live session, it's running from RAM. So that's pretty nice. You can also see that we're using Mate 1.24.1 and that the NVIDIA graphic driver is up and running automatically, which is pretty sweet. And you can also see that GhostBSD is using FreeBSD.0 stable. It's not the release version of FreeBSD, but a more up-to-date and rolling release version of FreeBSD. The different FreeBSD release names can seem confusing to newcomers and I'll perhaps cover that in a future video. So, we will get started with the installation. The GhostBSD install is a thing of simplicity and beauty. I've heard a reviewer complain that the installer is too hard, too techy, and not for the normal user, to which I would disagree completely. The installer hasn't changed for a long time, and that's because it doesn't need to. It gets to the point, and it does it well. There's no fancy, unneeded animations or adverts. It's just what's needed to get the job done. First, you choose the language you require. Then, you need to select the correct keyboard along with the time zone to go with it. After the localization options have been selected, you will have the disk install choices, beginning with disk configuration, with two options, one involving partitioning or full disk install. Select the disk you wish to install on, the pull type, we only have a single disk, and choose your pull name. You can leave it at default or change it, it's up to you, and the rest of the options can be left as they are on default. Then it's boot option, and in this case, because GhostBSD is the only OS on the disk, it will be the first, it will be, it will just be the FreeBSD BIOS loader, which, which is fine. Next, choose a password for the root or super user account. Then we need to input the user details such as name, password, etc., as well as the shell you prefer. You do get a good choice, but I'm gonna go with SH as the shell. So now we install, and I'll fast forward to the end.
Right, it's done. So I'll restart the system and load straight into the newly installed desktop. I've already looked at the menu options and uh, these are unchanged apart from one or two new additions which I've uh, installed so I can get the review done. But one thing I really do want to do is test the peripheral support. Now, I am limited mainly due to lack of peripherals. I've got no printer at the moment, but I can see if the webcam and USB sticks are recognized and mounted out of the box. So I've plugged in the webcam, a Logi C270 HD webcam, and I'll test it with OBS Studio. So we'll just uh, select OBS. We have to configure it first, so I'll uh, quickly go through it. Uh, not streaming, I'm going to go for uh, recording and run the quick test. There we go. Um, we'll just apply that. Right. So I'm just going to add a webcam. Yeah, that's fine, I'm just going to call it webcam. Okay, and there it is. I can tell it's working straight away, which is pretty sweet. The webcam at the moment is uh, perched unceremoniously in the uh, chair, so um, just readjusted it. And who is that handsome chap? Hello, there he is. Well, there's enough of that, and uh, we'll exit that. Okay. Next, I want to test a scanner, which is a normal flatbed scanner with a A4 sheet in it. We'll see if... Uh, yep, yeah, it's picked it up, which is pretty good. Now, whether or not it scans is a different thing, because I do sometimes have problems with FreeBSD and scanners. Um, we'll see if it does it. No, invalid argument. It's that's an error I sometimes get. Sometimes I just need to restart or replug the scanner in and it works, but that's fine. It detected the scanner, which is good. What we'll do next is put in a USB stick. Now this is a it's probably the one I used to install actually, but it's mounted it automatically. Just double click. And yes, it's fine. I don't have any Windows uh, formatted ones, but I know it will actually work with that. So next I want to go and show you how to install some software. If you go up to the main menu and no it's not across there is it? I forgot where it was in. Uh, printer I can't test unfortunately but we'll go to the software station and this lets you install or deinstall uh, software packages. So it's a bit like Synaptic for um, Linux really. Uh, it's going to refresh the database and there we go. So I'm just going to install KDE Connect. It's a very useful piece of software that lets you transfer and a lot of other stuff which I haven't used, but I know it can. It lets you transfer, for me, what I use, uh, pictures from my um, Android phone straight to the desktop without having to connect a fiddly little cable. So it's really useful. It uses your own network rather than Bluetooth, so it's, it's quite fast. Well, let's see if I can find it. KDE Connect. Uh, control Center, I think. Yeah, there it is, not KD Connect Settings. Right, so I'm just going to input the details onto my phone and we should see something pop up in a minute, hopefully. There it is, fantastic. It's popped up, so I'll uh, request access. And the top right hand corner, you can see Accept, Reject or View. So I'm just going to accept because it's from me. And there we go. Very nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer a couple of uh, pictures I used of my other system that runs GhostBSD. Used to be my main machine for FreeBSD, but I've converted it to GhostBSD. And it should be in the downloads. And there it is. So click on that. There we go. GhostBSD in the background. Very nice. And there's my test machine just to prove it's a different computer. Very good. Right, and the update station at the bottom is if there's any updates to your main system or any packages that you've installed and there really shouldn't be. No, no updates available. So cool. 
Just going to try installing something else. Um, maybe a game. One thing about the installer I like is that it's uh, key word activated. So say for instance, I want to uh, install mind test. I like mind test. Um, because I've installed recently a FreeBSD mind test or multi-game server on the Raspberry Pi 3. I think it only makes sense I, uh, I use that here, I think. So as you start typing in the software station, it will automatically pick up the packages that have an M in it. And as you go on, M-I-N, mine, and of course mine test, it will pick up the words. So I like that. That's really nice. So I will install mine test and mine test game. Also mine test mapper, which uh, I've not tried before. I'll try that later. We'll fire up the game and connect to the server that we created last time. Join game. Going to connect to the... 192.168.1.215 server that I created. Right, we're into the game. It's a fully working TARDIS within the game as well. I mean, obviously it doesn't go through time, but you can travel up and down the map anywhere you want to go, which is pretty cool. And it's actually bigger on the inside. So it runs quite smoothly. Actually, I think it runs more smooth on uh, this course BSD installation than it does on my free BSD one, which is always experienced some, some lag. And this one is quite smooth. So uh, we'll show you inside the TARDIS. There you go, look at that. It's bigger on the inside. It's fantastic. It's a great mod for the game. So, I'll just uh, go outside again. If there's any monsters, I'll uh, hit them with the thing. So yes, very nice indeed. Now, for those who are interested in backgrounds and wallpapers, etc., the uh, the range is not fantastic. They're very arty and very nicely done, but not a great choice. It would have been good to see some more specific Ghost PSD related ones. And the themes, well, they've got the same themes as always. It's functional, and uh, that's about you can say. I'm just going to adjust the uh, fonts. You do get a good range of fonts, although one of the fonts missing is uh, Roboto, which I can always install later, I suppose, but it would be nice to see it. Yeah, it's not there. But that's no big deal. So I'm just going to adjust the sizes, because uh, I can hardly read it on this screen. And finally, we'll just have a look at Top. And to see how the system is running. Not too bad. It's not bad at all. And of course it uses ZFS by default. So uh, there's a little bit of overhead there. But it's not too bad. So what do I think? Well, you know, I'm going to be slightly biased here. That <coughs> I uh, I think that Ghost PSD is a, an excellent uh, gateway OS into FreeBSD, but also a really fine OS on its own, in its own right. With every update that Eric does, Eric and the team, that it just, it gets better and better, up to a point now where really, I'm going to say every single release is the same, but there's not going to be major, in, you know, innovations. It's incrementally getting better. And, and that's a good thing because there are far too many, let's say, Linux distributions which decide to... Um, bring in major technological changes which breaks the system or breaks the user experience and of course then it almost feels like a different OS so this is good it's on a solid base and getting better all the time it's smooth it's fast it's very responsive works well with the peripherals I tried there's a very good compelling reason to use Ghost BSD it's um, very user friendly it's a free BSD based system and it's up there with the best of any Linux distribution. So if you're a Linux user and you kind of get in, you kind of get in uh, jaded, as it were, because of System D or perhaps other reasons. If you don't like the fact that some major Linux distributions are getting too cozy with Microsoft, then you know you would be not doing yourself a favor by not trying GhostBSD. It is an excellent OS and something which I think would introduce you to the world of FreeBSD with stable software, a fantastic friendly community, and above all, a sense of fun. Something which has been missing from OSs in general for quite a while now. Brilliant. Anyway, at the end of the video, 
I'm going to leave some of the uh, release notes to see what's changed. But thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.